Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. And what we have something very different. You haven't seen this before because this is a new edition 2011 uh, of the Ed Brown Show. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about eight trails that are in the area. And, and first of all, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the true American, the Cherokee, the home of the Cherokee. Can the original mountain people reconnect outdoors? Now, this is a terrific article, and it's talking about how the Cherokees in this country gave so much to this development of this country, the trails and things of that nature. Okay, we're going to begin with the great uh, Smoky Mountains or the backyard of the South, right? A place where 10 million tourists come each year to escape from the hustle of the city and they experience the Southern Appalachian wilderness. Now, when you talk about wilderness now, people, a lot of people say, hey, look, I live in the city, you know, but all of us, you know, need to walk. We need to get out and exercise. What happens is that this is about the home of the Cherokees. Now, there is no Cherokee word for wilderness. You know, we talk about wilderness, but really the Cherokees don't talk about it. What other people call wilderness is the Cherokees' home. We are part of it, and it is part of us, really. What people originally from Oklahoma, uh, they, uh, most of the uh, people moved to the western, northern North Carolina to stay. In the early 90s, he remembers the first time he saw the Smokies on a visit during the 70s, driving east from Knoxville with a group of friends. Okay, what really happens is that you, uh, uh, with this, we're talking about, he said, he was just talking about uh, Eddie Summers. He said, this is a home to wade in the water, to hike in the mountains, just to get out there is a connection. And that's a quote by Eddie Winters. I remember there was something, and that I, you know, like being in a crowd and catching a glimpse of someone you think, you, you, you think it was true for your eyes to see. The history of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Western North Carolina. That's where they actually uh, originated from. Okay, and is Really, the, when the Cherokee people were rounded up and herded west of the Mississippi by the U.S. government, violating a series of treaties, and eventually negotiated permanent return to their mountain stronghold, found the Eastern Band. The Eastern Band, you know, most of us, we feel that the Eastern Band, well, the, what is the Eastern Band? This is something we really want to talk about. First of all, over the next century, Cherokee culture was eroded by the government policy aimed at making them like other people. The Cherokees, they resented the fact that uh, the, their culture was being lost. And the founding superintendent of the Carlisle Indian School, Captain Richard uh, Pratt, summed up the, the, county, the country's attitude towards education educating Indians in the early 1900. All Indians, listen to this, there is in the race should be dead. Kill the Indians. These are the type of remarks when the, the uh, Americans were making. Today, the Cherokee connection to land and tradition has faded. Tribal members get checks from uh, proceeds from Harriers, the Cherokee, uh, we're talking about the casino, you know, where the Cherokee Indians, they were herded, and they decided to try to make some money on uh, the land. So casinos were one of the things. A few Cherokees exploited the wild wood or to speak the uh, native language. Most live in trailers and talk on iPhones now. So, so, what, so, so the modernization of uh, the Cherokee, uh, that is the thing that well, we're going to just uh, uh, talk about. Uh, uh, Jerry Wolf, a tribal ed 
uh, elder in his 80s, remember gathering chestnuts in the fall, spending endless hours cutting the stove wood. <laughs> Imagine hours cutting stove wood. But this, this is, takes you back here. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to give you a little background. And, and after ch actually uh, cutting the wood and things, uh, the chores, we were backwoods people. That's what people call the Cherokees. So they're backwoods. We didn't come out too much unless there was real business. Money kind of held us back from getting to town and communicating with people. It hurts him to see his grandchildren glued to those phones, video games, and computers. Uh, now this is 80 year old Cherokee and, and he's talking about how development has really uh, taken the culture away from uh, the Cherokee. It hurts him to see his grandchildren glued to their phones and et cetera, et cetera. For Wolf, connecting to the to the outdoors isn't just about experience nature, it's about experience the world as Cherokees. They, they looked at this country as nature. Uh, they weren't looking at the advancement in, in uh, the iPhones and things of that nature. The mountains and the streams had their own names, like Big Tall Mountain over there is the English name, we call it a rattlesnake mountain. <laughs> but in the Cherokee language, we call it cover with fire. Those were the different cultures which the uh, American Indian uh, had to make adjustment to. Yeah, uh, uh, the names were changed uh, when uh, the colony, uh, colonial colonies came here and they were sort of lost. Uh, the Rattlesnake Mountain is the integral character in the Cherokee story, which deals with destruction of primitive snakes that terrorize the people. The snakes possessed a magic. They use, hey, imagine <laughs> a snake the average person now is afraid of snakes, you know, but this was part of the culture which deals with destruction of, of, of the snake that terrorized people. The snake possessed a, a magic crystal in its head and it was finally killed by surrounding it with down timber and setting it up fire. The crystal was buried on the mountain and according to Wolf, it glowed as a beacon uh, to its master. Now, um, this, th these are facts that uh, most of us are not familiar with. Uh, here, the, the native Indian, the, and specifically the Cherokee, uh, they're just uh, Mr. Wolf, he's uh, Jerry Wolf, he's trying to give you some idea of what he went through and basically the problems that the Indian had adjusting to the culture that was developed uh, by the colonies. Uh, my son has seen the glow, he said. He uh, well, said two years ago, he was in the yard just about dark, and he said that the mountain was just glowing, and he thought my mind <laughs> uh, was crazy. And he, and he said, uh, uh, and you hear the words like crazy horse and things of that nature, they have significance. We'll fear the people connection to nature mediated by these stories and their language. It's going to be lost. Really what happened is that during the time, the uh, adjustment that the American Indian made, and spe specifically uh, Mr. Wolf here, 80 years old, he talked about the different cultures in which they had to make an adjustment to. See, uh, Wolf feared the people connection to nature mediated by the stories and their language is going to be lost. Uh, it's got to come from the home, from the parent. That's what we say now, the problems that we really have, the parent and the home. That's the, the, this back there, they had the same thing, problems with the home. And actually the uh, family is, is, the, is the beacon, is the light. The Indians themselves, they, they knew that. 
When I went to public schools, I was kind of ashamed to be an Indian. Here, he went to public school, Mr. Wolf, he's 80 years old. He said he was ashamed to be an Indian. That was because dances uh, with wolves and all that stuff. He said the digital age and the tribal uh, casinos prosperity has made it even more difficult. He said bringing in those, those items. But uh, Tom Belt believes that his people relationship to the mountain has not been completely lost, even among the younger generation. Now, they have a problem of bridging the generation gap between uh, Indian that was 80 and now a teenager, a teenage uh, Cherokee. Well, he's in a different environment and it's diff difficult really for them to communicate. Uh, it is in the DNA. Is there a psychological memory? Some kind of deep subconscious memory. Uh, I, he said, I battle how it works myself, but I do not know. There are certain experiences that are indisputable. Uh, it is, what, what do you say? You take a book and you learn from it. It is on the feeling of the movement of the river, the sound and the movement of the springtime river and everything. All of these, the rivers in everything, they meant something. They had a significant thing. A river was run. Modern Cherokee bear little resemblance to the place where Jerry Wolf grew up. The tribe's success with starting this brought money to build infrastructure created jobs and competed in the regional economy. He said, well, now they're not in the economy. On a weekday, the town is bustling with construction projects, uh, tourism, and people hustling back and forth between office and homes. Uh, Principal's Chief Mitchell Hicks has been a major architect in reshaping the landscape in, in the Cherokee country overlooking a development of a $600 million expansion. And this million dollar expansion <laughs> was <laughs> for Herrera's to actually bring. But the uh, negative effect that these casinos have had on the uh, Indian country, the Indians like Mr. Wolf, they are really devastated about, about the change, about the introduction of the iPhone and different electronic things. But he believes that the adjustment can be made. It can be made if more money is put into development into the Indian country, especially the Cherokee, and that's in the Smoky Mountains, that's in Tennessee, Mississippi, and the areas around here. And uh, really, they can't understand uh, why, uh, with the economy like it is, why there's more money, more money is not dedicated to developing the culture of the Cherokee, which is fading. So uh, what I'm trying to do is make you aware of the fact that the number one American, the American Indian, and specifically the Cherokee, Mr. Wolf, he testified in this article here about the wilderness and things of that nature, of pre preserving that. But we, basically what we're going to do, we're going to let money. Money is the thing that's ruining the development as far as the Cherokee is concerned. They're not part of the economy. Okay, then, be back in a minute. We're going to talk about eight different trails that you, everybody, needs to go out and exercise. And I'm going to tell about trails that you yourself, you can take your family to. Okay, see you in a second.